All right, we got one more micro talk. So we've got Adrian and Olivier coming up, going to be talking about do contract. Um, as a reminder, afterwards, if you want to ask anybody that gave a little micro talk questions, they're going to be around here or outside or somewhere. Am I totally standing in the way? What's yes. happening here? All right, so here we go. We got two people, one micro talk. You guys can do it. Yes. Okay, well, Adrian's getting set up. Oh, we're all set up already. Um, I'm a lawyer in Amsterdam. I make uh, development contracts. And Adrian uh, was at my office, and at the last two minutes he said, oh, I'm working on something, and he showed me do contract. Uh, and that was, well, it took some more time to get it finished. Uh, but Adrian, from his own need of being able to conclude contracts quickly and also sort of easily with the other people that he works with on games, um, created this tool, and I looked with him from my experience in, in concluding lots and lots and lots and lots of agreements on what works, but also so what needs to be in there, but also what needs to be left out uh, to make it a bit more of a fluid experience. Yes. So, um, so yeah, Do Contract has been a project uh, of, of me and Olivier, basically, too, uh, for the past half year, may, maybe a year by now. Uh, the whole idea is... Um, do not read the right side uh, at all because it will just take you too much time and etc. Uh, stay so definitely focus on the on the left side. Um, the basic premise of do contract is that it's free. You go to www.docontract.com um, and you fill in data on the left and it makes an agreement on the right. Uh, that is that fits work for hire or collaborations with other people. And uh, the fun thing about the, uh, the, uh, the agreement is that you can basically select here using um, these, um, what, do you sell, what do you call these things, drop-down uh, menus, what kind of project you want to do, how you decide uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, compensation or what you're going to do with the, the rights to the work. Basically, it or by filling this in, you already uh, make a lot of... Um, um, uh, agree, you basically make the agreement as you go. Yeah, so the, the choices on how to work together. Uh, but still it can be a bit daunting, so we thought we'd take 10 minutes to walk you through an example agreement. Um, stuff you change on the left shows up on the right. So there's John, and then there's John's company. Um, company address. The company can be anything, so whether you're a Einman Sack or a VOF or BV in a Dutch context or a limited, it's just plug in the numbers from the Chamber of Commerce, the same for the contractor, that can be an individual contractor as well. Um, your uh, company address, uh, and then the name of the product that you're working on. The um, data is saved uh, in a cookie, so you can go back to it later, uh, but you cannot really uh, share it. The, the output is a PDF, or you can just copy and paste the text so that you can continue working on it if you need to uh, share it later. So what are we going to do? It's a very personal project. Um, services and deadlines can be either project-based or milestone-based. What's the difference? The difference, I guess, that project-based works well if it's a short, uh, discrete, or at least a discrete contribution. Milestone-based if it's a bit of a longer project uh, and you need to find out once in a while, every month or every two weeks, uh, the progress, uh, and perhaps you can also attach some kind of uh, acceptance to it. I see. So you fill in what you need to deliver. Uh, if you do um, uh, services for the milestones, those are milestones based together with a due date. Um, and when you need to complete it. Now I have to admit, I don't know actually how that turns up in the agreement, but I think we decided that it's not a fixed date, so it's a date to work towards. You because can. in practice, and this is the kind of, of knowledge and experience from, let's say, practical and the legal point of view that goes into this, that if somebody misses a deadline, you're not just going to stop the project. You're going to work and see how you can make it work. So putting something in a contract that what's sometimes in there, that um, a deadline is uh, a fixed term or a terminal deadline, which means that if you miss it, you, well, you, you don't die, but you... Uh, are immediately in default, so that puts things under pressure, and in practice it's seldomly enforced. So if you have that in a contract, that influences the relationship already from the get-go. So we made some choices, 
uh, for you in how basically. to put things in there. Mm. Yeah. So the default contract, obviously, it's you can just use it, and it has a lot of these stats already in it. Um, next up is compensation. So there's four choices here: fixed fee, fixed rate, uh, fee per milestone if you previously selected milestone, or a percentage of gross receipts. What's the difference between these four things, Olivier? Uh, well, fixed, I think, is fee. Uh, uh, fixed fee is, um, uh, let's say, a thousand dollars. That cannot change unless I, you ask for more work. Uh, yep. Fixed rate is a fixed hourly rate, uh, and you can budget it, but it's not. It's open ended. What's the third one again? Fee, uh, per, milestone. fee per milestone. Uh, so that's basically either a fixed rate or a fixed gap, but it's in, in increments, so you know when to. Uh, expect something, and a percentage of gross is uh, well, percentage of gross receipts. Um, it's the most complicated one. Basically, if you go into a collaboration with someone, instead of hiring someone else, you probably want to have an agreement with him that instead of paying him upfront, you share what comes in after you've actually made the game, released the game, and are making money. And uh, yeah, this was this was definitely the one that we put most effort in. Um, uh, that I put most effort in because this is really the kind of way the, the way I want to uh, to work with other people. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options here um, that you, with your collaborator, will need to to, uh, to go through. Let's point out the gross, though. Sorry, let's point out the gross because you'll see if this is working. Uh, percentage of gross receipts. Uh, gross receipts is defined as the money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but then you can also earn back specific back choose to earn back specific expenses first. For every uh, option, there's a little, a small explanation as well. So let's say you find it acceptable to uh, be able to um, recoup uh, expense, um, marketing expenses going to uh, PAX, for example. Uh, we did not bother with deductibles. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so again, going from top to bottom through this data list will make you think about all the options. And we've already like constructed a, a sort of logical list with all the options that we have asked. Also, uh, we, I've asked probably like more than uh, 50 or 100 game developers uh, over the internet uh, that have all been making games that you guys have probably played or know um, to help me figure out what these options are. And that's basically what, if you just, Go through the data, fill it in, you'll automatically get an agreement that at least covers uh, these things uh, in basic. And it can um, be for less than $10,000 projects as well. Um, I've actually used this myself for clients. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Eating my own dog food. Um, so we have an amount here, percentage of gross receipts. Um, the expenses are the ones that you can deduct. Uh, you can cap the earnings from the ref share, um, which is also a common option. Um, when do you need to pay, which is more of an accounting thing and, and depends on how often you get paid as the developer slash publisher. Uh, when does this stop, which can tie into the, to the cap. Uh, and for what it counts for, for example, only the platform that you initially make your contribution for or also other uh, platforms. Uh, minimum amounts often in there because it's annoying to have to pay $20 uh, to someone. Uh, an additional payment on release, other date. Which one was that, uh, Adrian? Say again? This one. Additional payment on release. Yeah, so for some projects, it makes sense to also, next to having a revenue share, uh, also pay someone when the project is finished. Yeah. So that's, again, that's like a, d a choice, a uh, decision you can make um, that, you can, that you can think about. Okay, so this is um, your field of work. Um, here we have, we come to the rights of work, which is basically the biggest reason to have an agreement because if, if you work with or someone works for you, you want to say what he's being compensated for. Um, and that's what the rights, and that, that's basically the IP, the rights to work. Uh, we have two options here. Use and own. Use is a license, own is a transfer. Um, a license can also approximate a transfer, but the, the license, the idea is that it's, it's limited. So, for example, only for the game and that you uh, 
uh, may or may not use the contribution, oh, well, that's this one, sorry, goes down, to use the work for specific purposes. Uh, is the contribution limited to that game only or can you use it for something else as well? Um, the parts of the work, so if we're working with a license, the parts of the work that are still owned uh, is primarily for background tech uh, that you don't transfer, uh, transfer that. Yeah, or other things, like an artist maybe wants to sell t-shirts and wants to have the game logo on it. And uh, of course he'll need, if someone else is buying the rights from him, then of course he does need the rights to actually be able to sell a t-shirt yeah. or else. Um, so it's also a way to work through the expectations that you have. Um, from the, uh, the maker's viewpoint, that you, whether you can use it in a portfolio, for example. So Vida, uh, can she use it for specific purposes? Uh, a typical choice would be to use it for your uh, portfolio and maybe other uh, things. Confidential information is the easy one. It has no variable data. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of disagreement, uh, which is also a tricky one to, uh, to get to, but you need to choose basically a country uh, where um, the law applies and uh, a court, hopefully the same one. Um, because if you disagree after you agreed, um, it helps to be certain where you end up. Um, usually it's the country of the person that pays. Okay, so um, once we filled everything in, that's basically when you have an agreement, you um, basically print it. There's a link here that says print agreement and save as PDF. So here you get a nice, very simple, simply formatted document. You save it, you talk to your collaborator, and if you both like what you're reading, you sign it, and then you have an agreement. And it's that simple, and it's free. Now there's a big um, caveat here. Uh, if you do the transfer for the IP, this needs to be a paper copy. Okay, well that's not the caveat I wanted to talk ah. about. <laughs> you don't lawyers, get a guarantee. Lawyers. No. Um, <laughs> if you ever need something that doesn't fit in here, that is maybe radically different, do talk to an attorney or a lawyer. If you are talking about serious amounts of money, please do talk to an attorney or a lawyer. Um, because in the end, this thing, and that we didn't really talk much about because it's not as interesting. In the end, this thing is, is written by me with help from Olivier. And this thing is not actual like legal talk. Um, if you want to know more about that, uh, check, just go to the website. There's like a, like a huge amount of, a wall of text basically, uh, talking about what the difference is between having an agreement with legal talk in it and having due contract, which is not really legal, but like actual understandable language. Um, so yeah, if you ever need something that's like really specific to you or you're talking about serious money, go to Olivier or any attorney. Um, so yeah, um, docontract.com, check it out. If you ever need free agreements, that's it. Thank you, Olivier.